Good afternoon, everyone. Masa al khair alaykum. Uh, it's my pleasure to be with you today to discuss a very important topic, uh, research methodology. Let me share my screen. My name is Elham Yusri. I'm professor of pediatrics and head of the pediatric hematology and bone marrow transplantation unit, Cairo University. Research is very important for developing uh, of nations. So it's very important to develop the skills to conduct uh, uh, good research and to follow the systematic approach of, uh, of the research. Let us share uh, some tips uh, about uh, research and I hope to be of value to every one of you. These are the outlines I will discuss today. Let us start with the first research cycle. Firstly, what's research? Research is a systematic collection, analysis, and interpretation of data to answer certain questions to solve a problem. لو جينا حطينا الخطوات يبقى firstly a researcher أو ال 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 investigator عينه بتشوف مشكلة. He extracts what's called research question from this problem. Then you follow systematic collection, analysis, and interpretation of data to find an answer for the question. And definitely by answering the question, uh, he or she will solve the problem. This is the value of research. So, so research is very important to answer questions and to solve problems. If we want to know what is the research cycle, من فين بتبدأ قصة الريسيرش؟ قصة الريسيرش بتبدأ ب research question in the head of the researcher, in the, in the mind of the researcher. This researcher will transfer this research question into a good research design. منهجية بحث مناسبة. Then the researcher will start to collect data and by data management where statistical analysis to, uh, to find the answer for the, the starting question. And this is called the research cycle. Let us zoom in the first step, which is the research question. It's very important to know how to write the research question. Great papers come from great research questions. So the more we are good in writing and reading the research questions, the more we can transfer this research question into uh, successful research. Research question should follow this, this format. It is the BICO format or the BICO format. It's an acronym. B stands uh, stand for uh, the patient or the participant in this research, the participant in this research. Who are your patient? Who are your sample, uh, sample included in the research? What, did the inter what will uh, be done for these uh, samples? What are the intervention? I stand for intervention. C stands for comparison. What is the control if present? O stands for the outcome. What are you measuring? What is the outcome you want to measure? What is the outcome you want to uh, detect? This, this is the PICO format. Any research question uh, should be feasible. What does it mean feasible? Feasible يعني قابل للتطبيق. It's, a, it's a feasible. Feasible قابل للتطبيق. يعني we do have the time and resources and the equipment to answer this question. This research question should be interesting or value. People want to know the answer of this question. It should be novel. Uh, it, there is no existing answer for it in the, in, the, in the evidence. It should be ethical, ethical with no violation of the ethical, uh, ethical uh, 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 laws or the ethical, ethical point of, of any research. It should be relevant, relevant to the uh, researcher, uh, researcher uh, knowledge. It should be relevant to the, uh, to the context it is uh, conducted and so any research question should be finer. Finer is 
the acronym of feasible, interesting, novel, ethical, and relevant. Let us practice the research question. This is one of the research questions. Is iron overload a risk factor for impairment, uh, impaired glucose tolerance uh, test uh, in Egyptian uh, thalassemia major patient? This is one of uh, the examples of a research question. Let us extract the PICO from this, uh, research, the, this question. P here, the thalassemia major Egyptian patient. I is the iron overload. C, other with, no, with normal iron level. The outcome we want to measure is the uh, impaired glucose tolerance. Impaired glucose tolerance test. This is the BICO extracted from this research question. And definitely by uh, and the starting from this research question, the researcher should select the best research design that can answer this research, this question and to find an answer for this question to solve the problem. What are this research design? It is Menhagiyat al -Bahs. We do have different uh, study design. Uh, the study design can be descriptive, can be comparative. The difference between this is the presence of the control group. The descriptive, no control group. The comparative, there is a control, there is a control group. The descriptive study is like case report or case series. Uh, just uh, the difference between them is the, the number of cases involved. However, the comparative study, in the comparative study, there should be a control group. It is either observational. Observational means the researcher make no intervention. The researcher do not assign intervention for any of the studied group. So it's called observational or quasi-experimental, quasi-experimental. Or it may be experimental. Experimental means the investigator assign intervention for the studied, uh, studied participant. And the observation can be classified into either cohort, case control, or cross-sectional study. The difference between these types, these three types, the difference between the cohort, case control, and the cross-sectional is the relation between exposure and outcome. In any research, the studied subject or the studied group of patients, they are exposed to certain factors, and we measure the outcome, uh, the outcome uh, uh, generated. The relation between exposure and the outcome uh, is the key to classify the observational study into either cohort, case control, or cross-section. If the exposure is in one step and prospectively forward, we will follow the patient over time prospectively to detect the outcome. So the exposure is away from the outcome that is generated prospectively over time. This is called cohort study. Exposure then going uh, prospectively over time to detect the outcome. However, the case control is starting from the outcome and going backward, searching for the exposure. So it is starting here from the outcome and going backward, prospect retrospectively, retrospectively to detect the exposure over time. Cross-sectional, it is very easy. It is a cross-sectional study. There is no time factor in this research. I just see the, my studied cases once. And in the same visit, I study the exposure factor and the uh, outcome factor. So in the cross-sectional study, there is no time between assessing the exposure factor and uh, measuring the outcome factor. Yeah, but these are the three types of the observational or quasi-experimental studies. What about the experimental studies? As we just mentioned, experimental studies mean investigator assign intervention for the studied group. 
it's called the randomized control trial. Randomized control trial, it is the experimental comparative study. Uh, the, 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 the best evidence uh, it started from here, and as we go to in this direction, the evidence become much weaker. So the best evidence extracted from the randomized control trial, followed by uh, cohort, uh, and so on, and the least evidence extracted from case report and case series. Let us ask ourselves a question. What is the best design? What is the best design? The answer, there is no best design. The best design, there is no best design for mutlaq. Absolute best. No, there is no uh, uh, best design for mutlaq. But the best design, it is the design that can answer the research question in the available context. Because every research Design has its pros and cons. There is no best film outlook. Yeah, but what is the best research design? It is the best design that answers the research design, the, the, sorry, the research question in the available context. What is the available context? The available context, it is the feasibility, the, what is the time available, what is the uh, equipment available, what is the manpower, what is the previous knowledge uh, or in, the or in the research uh, that, that, that the, researcher, the researchers have. So this is the available context. So uh, uh, always research design uh, is selected based on in, in, uh, in many factor, which is the visibility, time, equipment, uh, manpower, hmm? The purpose of the study, is it a therapeutic study? Is it uh, uh, testing the testing uh, um, uh, exposure, testing uh, uh, investigation? What is the purpose of the study? Uh, what is the knowledge existed? Is it, is it a de nouveau information or building on, on already existing information? Uh, what are the studied variables? Uh, the exposure variable and the outcome variable, are they rare? Are they risky? Uh, uh, are they difficult to be measured? Uh, do we have the equipment to measure them? All these things uh, determine the uh, research design. What is the latency between exposure and uh, development of the outcome? Sometimes uh, there is a big time, uh, a, a wide time between developing the outcome after the exposure uh, at that moment we can't start from the exposure and go forward uh, prospectively over time to detect the outcome uh, we can't wait for 40 years or more so the latency is very important which is the the time between ex uh, uh, being exposed to develop the outcome what at this time this is called the latency. All these are factors that, that can help the researcher to select the research design uh, uh, able or uh, that can answer the, uh, the research question. Again, each research design has its pros and cons. Let us discuss uh, uh, the different research design. Let us start with the cross-sectional study. What is the cross-sectional study? Cross-sectional study, I start with population and at the same time, the sample will be collected to measure the exposure and the outcome. And I will classify this, uh, ex the, uh, this population involved uh, in my study based on the presence and the absence of exposure and the presence and the absence of the outcome. So I may have, I may have a group with presence of both. I may have a group with presence of exposure and the absence of the outcome. I may have a group with the absence of the exposure and the presence of the of the outcome, and I may have a group with absence of both. Look for this study. Uh, uh, it is a study, and we can get an answers from this study. However, this study has pros and cons. Let us discuss what are the pros of this study. This is easy study. It's one visit. I can collect all my data. 
So it is easy, feasible, short time, low cost, uh, no follow up period. So it's easy study. Uh, it provides data, definitely, especially if uh, the, the, the information is lacking and the knowledge is lacking in, the, in, this, uh, in the, this point we want to study. Uh, uh, it may serve as a baseline for other more rigorous design. So it may be the starting point of randomized control trial in the future. So it has its cones, its bros. However, it has its cones. What are the cones of, in this design? This design is weak design. The relation between the exposure and the outcome is weak, is weak. So there is weak evidence uh, on the, in the temporal relation between exposure and the outcome. Definitely there are uh, many confounding factors that can affect the result. Uh, uh, so we don't have uh, uh, any measures to control the confounding factor in this study. And these are the cones of this design. However, it can be used if we don't have the time and the equipment and the uh, feasibility to go for more rigorous study. The other research design is the case control study. In the case control study, as we discussed, we start with the outcome and we go retrospectively to detect the exposure. We start with the outcome, disease case and no disease case, and retrospectively we go backward to collect the exposure data from the history and the patient, uh, uh, patient uh, file and by making questionnaire to detect the, ex the presence and the absence of the exposure. So this study also has its pros and cons. What are the pros and cons of this study? Definitely this study is fe feasible. There is short time. I'm, I'm, I'm studying cases, going uh, and set on some papers, uh, patient record, records, patient records, the hospital records, and collect data. So it's short time and low cost, which is, which is uh, uh, improving the visibility of this, uh, this study design. Uh, it can confirm a new hypothesis and most suitable for the study of rare diseases. If I do have rare diseases, this is one of the most suitable research design for rare diseases. However, this study have its cones. What's its cones? Uh, there is a selection bias, uh, no randomization. Uh, also, there is uncertainty in the temporal relation between the disease and the exposure factor. Uh, there are a, a lack of control of the confounding factor in this research design. So case control study, it is another study with its pros and cons. Let us move for another research design. It is the cohort study. Cohort study, we start here from the exposure and we take group exposed to the risk factor and the other uh, not exposed to the risk factor. We start with the exposure and we go forward prospectively over time to detect the outcome and we classify our patient based on the outcome, presence and the absence of the outcome in the, the studied group and its control. So this study, there is follow-up period and this study also has its pros and cons. What are the pros and cons of the cohort study? Cohort study, as you see here, it's a strong design. There is a, there is a prospective follow-up of our patient. So the relation between exposure and the outcome can be studied rigorously and strongly. So uh, there is ability to control the confounding factor, definitely. It yield uh, uh, the risk, it yield a good instance of the, of the, of the, of the relative risk uh, of, the, of, the, of this exposure factor. However, it has its cones. What's its cones? It needs long time. This long time means time and money. So it is 
uh, high cost research design. Uh, definitely, this follow up period may lead to a number of drop uh, drop out bias. So some patient may be dropped. I can start with 100 patients. Then by during follow up, uh, they may decrease the number due to drop up. So there is a drop out bias. There is a selection bias because this selection, I selected this uh, group and I categorized them uh, 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 while I am aware with with, the sele with 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 who I will select, uh, which patient will be included in this group, which one is included in that group, so there may be a selection bias. Uh, so, despite it is a strong research design, but it has its cones. So, cohort study. It's another research design with its pros and cons. Let us move for the other, the other, uh, the, the last design, which is the randomized control design. As we just mentioned, randomized control uh, uh, design is the comparative experimental in which the investigator assign, assign intervention for uh, uh, the studied group. So here we do have the experimental group in which we assign the intervention. And most of the time, this intervention will be the treatment that we offer for our experimental group. And the other group, it is the comparative group in which um, uh, they, didn't, they didn't take this intervention. And as cohort study will follow prospectively these two groups over time and classify them based on the outcome, presence or absence of the outcome. If you look for this design, it's very close to the cohort study, except in, in the intervention the, investigation, the investigator will offer for certain group and and uh, and uh, and uh, 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 yeah, didn't give this intervention for the other group. This is the difference uh, between cohort and case control, a randomized control trial till this moment. However, there is another, another, another difference, which is this stage. How you select your, your, your sample group, your patient, how you categorize them into the experimental uh, group and the comparison group. This is very important in randomized control trial. The sample will be, uh, it's a random sample. Then all the target population will be uh, 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 randomized, randomized, randomized into experimental and the comparison. And this randomization may be a blind randomization. Randomization means to uh, uh, group your, uh, your, your, uh, your patient into either of the studied group, experimental or comparison. This is called randomization. And this randomization may be blind randomization. And the more we make this randomization blind, the more we will uh, minimize the selection bias. Despite this rigorous research design, but it has its pros and cons. What are the pros? The pros of this study, it's a strong design. It confirmed the hypothesis. Most suitable taban research design uh, if we want to study the treatment, definitely. The ability to control a uh, uh, confounding factor is very, uh, is very strong. Uh, researcher here can control the confounding factor. Uh, controlling the bias, um, because there is blindness, there is uh, blind randomization. However, despite all these strong point, this research design has its cones. What's its cones? It needs long time. It's very high cost, very high cost. There is an ethical dilemma. There is an ethical dilemma about uh, this intervention that I will make in some of the studied uh, um, patients. It is safe drug is do i have uh, the written consent from my patient do i explain all things to my patient so there is ethical problem 
in conducting randomized control trial. Uh, uh, definitely, uh, during follow-up, there may be a dropout bias, definitely. So at that moment, we do have many research design. Each of them has its pros and cons. No best design for Motluck. Best design, best design is the research design that can answer the research question in the available context. Each research design has its pros and cons. These are the research design that we have. Please select the best that can answer your research question, uh, taking into consideration your uh, context and the available uh, resources, the available time. Thank you so much. Uh, I hope I hope I uh, I present this important topic in an easy way, and I hope you will it, it will be of value to every one of you. Thank you so much, and looking forward to meet you again in other videos. Thank you. Bye bye.